Hello and welcome everybody to the Status Report highlight for the 25th of October 2016. Another Status Report Tuesday comes around with Brian, Peter, Victor, Mirak and Adam, where they will share the latest info on where we are at in the development process. Over the last two weeks, the team have been doing a lot of iteration and regression testing on the critical issues preventing 061 Experimental Unstable Branch update. As you all may recall, those issues are server-side performance and player-to-player -player sync. For the end user, that translates into A, how fluid your actions are in-game, as well as how functional AI is, and B, how you see and hear other players. Think sliding, player position, and gunshot sounds. The gameplay programming team, led by Miroslav Manina, has made some big improvements in the issues previously mentioned regarding poor performance in high ping situations. And in the player-to-player -player sync, we're no longer seeing the jittering hitching we previously saw in the 100 plus millisecond range, and player-to-player -player sync issues are greatly reduced. However, we are still able to reproduce them in some situations. The list of stable blockers includes several other issues. But experimental blocking issues really currently is isolated to getting server performance to an acceptable rate with the dynamic spawning of infected and 40 to 60 player population, and knocking out the last issues with player to player sync listed above. This is where the bulk of gameplay programming and QA resource are currently focused. Hicks can say personally from the frequent multiplayer test passes the team have been doing nearly every day for the last two weeks, he has not encountered a single case of traditional desync. However, that said, he is personally holding his breath until we see how this performs under a large player population, such as the experimental and stable branch. In addition to that, we've taken a look at some of the feedback on our forums about the .61 version of the server browser and its filtering options, and made changes accordingly. You can see the latest look of it on screen now. Additionally, we want to take this opportunity to wish community manager Esmos a fond farewell. I've spoken to Esmos personally myself on numerous occasions, and I can say what an awesome guy he is. He's moving on to awesome opportunities that have come his way. Myself and the Daisy Dev team are wishing him all the best, and he will be missed. And with that farewell being said, let's welcome a new community team member, Beatty, a devout Daisy lover with strong knowledge of Daisy and an active member of the Czech and Twitch Daisy communities. Also guys, we have another reminder to swing by the forums and take part if you have time, as the team tried to take an active role there as much as possible, discussing their perspectives on the state of the build, as well as share insights into development in general. Over the last few weeks, Hicks has shared some videos and screenshots of .61 development, and healthy discussion into development in general. Links to these forum posts will be in the description below. Now let's move on to .61 must fix issues. Client crashes after exiting title. Player to player sync. Using cancel action on item in hands will cause item to be stuck in hands. Dynamic shadow issues on specific structures. Server performance under ideal load. And magazine volume inconsistent between players. Now let's have another look at those .61 milestone goals. Server login queue. Merge of new audio technology from AMA3 Eden update. Update of weapon sounds for new audio technology. Dynamic spawning of infected. Wolves. Dynamic shadows. Network synchronization improvements and new server browser. Let's see what lead animator Victor has to say this week. Our main focus at the moment is on our user actions and player locomotion. We are adjusting the graph and animations to make it more fluent and natural, since some user actions start in different stances, some allow you to move and some not. We need to make sure this works as intended. This means a lot of work on the code side, animation graph and animations. Regarding the player locomotion, we are in the process of replacing single loop animations with two to three loops. That basically means Instead of repeating one cycle of run, there are now three cycles, which makes it less repetitive. It allows the character to run more naturally and believable. At the same time, there is work in progress on next unjamming animation. This time it is for break action rifles. Since making unique weapon animations is usually very time consuming, we always create unjamming for a specific type of gun, which then we retarget and adjust with some details for other firearms of the same type. Now let's see what lead gameplay programmer Mirik has to say. Today, I will try to be fast. As we're trying to resolve blocking issues as fast as possible, we're still dealing mostly with animation desync issues and server performance issues, as we want to spawn more infected than in previous versions. Work is going well, and we are every day closer to the state in which we want to release Experimental .61. The rest of the team is working on vehicle physics, new features for damage system, and improvements on infected AI. Now we move on to map designer Adam. It's been a long time since we've read something from the environment department in a status report. So let's change that, as Adam is going to cover some of the changes that you will see during your .61 journeys in Chernerus. While we are busy with many tasks prior to the upcoming large scale changes to the map, there will be more on this in the future, we were still able to focus on some specific locations that were in dire need of help for the past few months. 
Mishkino, located deep in the west, has been completely redone from scratch. The new layout is inspired a bit by its real counterpart. Its proximity to one of the busiest military areas of Chernerus has been kept in mind, so do not worry. Suznovka, the little village north of Zelenogorsk, has met the same fate as Mishkino and has been completely redone from scratch to hopefully match its hilly position better. And to make it more village-like, many changes have also happened to its surroundings, aka the land of heli crash sites, with a small surprise on Suznovka Pass. Porkovo, another village in the land of helicopter crash sites, and another one to bring us closer to the ultimate task of revisiting all settlements of Chernerus. Porkovo has been redone from scratch along with its surroundings. There is an interesting open market area, new pond, and medium-sized apple orchard to the west. Koglovo, another village, this time within central Chernerus on the way to Stary Sobor. This one couldn't be missed, as many of its neighbours, Shakovka and Staroy, have been changed in point six zero already. Delina, an amazing spot for a village, yet for many survivors probably an unknown place. A new and extended stream within the valley shapes the new layout of Delina in a unique way. The village itself has grown quite a lot, and it should hopefully attract more survivors now. Solnishni. Settlement revision is a lengthy task. But with the changes within Solnishni, we are yet closer to having all villages within the eastern part of Chernerus upgraded to new daisy standards. While you may still recognize this village, many additional details were added to the layout, along with major texture data changes to the village itself and its surroundings, including three valleys as seen in the pictures. But with all that being said, Adam won't give us the full list of what has been done in point six one. There is still much to explore, and he will leave that to us. And finally on this week's status report, I deliver to you two new pictures of the Little Bird helicopter. Found on the Daisy Trello, all links will be in the description below as always. Looking forward to getting my fingers on point six one and beyond. Let me know in the comments below what you think. As always, I recommend you read the status report in full for yourselves, for the most amount of information that it holds. And I'll see you peeps next time.